Anyway, the bottom line is, uh, I I didn't buy Skinner's philosophy, but I thought his method was fantastic. The experimental method was great. On the other hand, as I've gotten older and worked with more interesting animals, not, not pigeons, but dogs, not yet human beings, they're much too complicated. Um, I realized that uh, you've got to know more than that. And I've written about this in a Darwinian context, right? Because well, the behavior of the individual is not too different from the behavior of, of a species. The animal does various things. Some of them lead to good results. Some of them lead to bad results. Uh, they're cued in certain complicated ways. But it is just like natural selection. The animal tries things, the good ones inclined to repeat and so on. And Skinner was very good on that part of it. Yes, yeah, selection. It were reinforcement, strengthens behavior, selects and so on. What he wasn't so good on was where does that behavior come from? Where does that behavior come from? If an animal, uh, in Skinner's terms, has an operant level, that is, it's certain tendency to do different things, um, what, did, what determines that operant level? Is it just random? You know, is it just random? Of course, it's not random at all. It's not random at all. And that was uh, uh, an early discovery we made when we tried to repeat a key experiment of Skinner's found. But, uh, John, what? what's, what's he even interested in what happens here? And I should say, why, why it's happening? I mean, did, did he have interest or it was really just, let's look at the behavior? Yeah, I mean, uh, Skinner was not interested. I mean, well, he Skinner was a complicated guy. I don't want to get into a lot of stuff. People probably, probably many people now hardly know who Skinner was. But um, he was a complicated guy because it, it, in one context, he was perfectly willing to talk about uh, behavioral tendencies, if you like, that we, we can't observe. He was perfectly happy to talk about that. Um, in the context of what he called verbal behavior, speech. Huh. Perfectly happy to talk about that. But not in connection with animal behavior, which is why, I don't know. I really don't know why he didn't extend that. And in the, again, in the context of human behavior, he was, um, he, he was happy to talk about private events, you know. What's a private event? Well, it's just like an external event. Is it really? An external event we can measure. Can we measure these private events? No, we can't. You know, so that was a bit self-contradictory. And he had passionate advocates and so on. He still All does. He has, he has huge following. And I mean, that's kind of what I was saying, especially in the dog training world. It's even if, as you say, some people, of course, know the name, but don't know exactly what he brought up. <laughs> And, and what he's famous and what he's controversial about. But for certain, um, dog trainers know about him. But there is, there is a, a huge following that um, even, even today it, it's, it's shown that certain things, it's, you know, you cannot just reinforce or suppress behavior and not look at why that behavior happens it's it just it's That's so right. wrong it's so it's a the wrong I mean, idea. One thing to remember one thing to remember you maybe can tell these people is when you give present a stimulus of value food electric shock some other kind of punishment that changes the repertoire of the animal right there that changes the repertoire of the animal and if if you are trying to reinforce a behavior let's say with food, uh, that really really is from, the, let's say, a social repertoire. It's not really a food-related bit. You give food to reinforce it, it doesn't reinforce it. It, it generates a, a bunch of competing behaviors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not, every, not every behavior, now, reinforces are not like money. You know, economists think of money, it reinforces everything. It's all the same. That's rubbish, of course, but it's also rubbish, even with a dog, that food can reinforce everything. Yes. A lot of 
dogs behave as a social repertoire. It comes from a different place and so on. And you have to have some kind of intuitive understanding of it if you could really be able to work with the animal. At least that's my, I mean, they do much more dogs than I do. But uh, that's my, that's definitely my figure. <laughs>